Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. Let's get right back to the action. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops and Jeff Kuna, Freedom Friday's official Washington, D.C. correspondent and writer for the Washington Times. All right, welcome back, America. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. And with us, of course, is Jeff Cooner, who is the host of the Cooner Report out of the powerhouse uh, WRKO out of Boston. He's also a columnist with the Washington Times, and he is our weekly correspondent out of Washington, D.C. to Freedom Friday. Jeff, welcome back. Listen, Jeff, I, I want to ask you this. I mean, we can talk about anything you want, but I want to ask you for your uh, D.C. insight. Uh, so the headlines of Drudge right now, uh, Mahmoud, I'm in a bad job. Uh, it says Israel will soon be destroyed. Uh, the Ayatollah underneath him is saying Israel's existence is an insult to all of humanity. So we've got Israel and Iran s- rattling sabers uh, hugely. We've got the man in the White House who has not made a single visit to Israel. He's telling Israel to stand down until after the election. What's the talk in Washington about this? I mean, we could be on the brink, literally, of World War III. I mean, this could be biblical in nature. What, what's the talk in Washington? Well, the talk in Washington is that the Israelis now see themselves as having a three- to six-month window before Iran uh, embarks upon a path that is irreversible in terms of them attaining a nuclear bomb. They now realize maybe by February or January at the absolute latest, if they do not strike Iran's nuclear facilities, their installations will be too deep underground, their program will be too advanced, that then it's just a matter of time before Iran gets the bomb, and once they get the bomb, they will use it and annihilate Israel with it. And so now Iran realizes that Israel is on a war footing, and this is why they in Tehran are bracing for a military showdown. Both sides now know a war is inevitable. What the Israelis are now calculating, and this is, I think, going to be the most important dynamic of this entire election, is should they wait for a potential Romney victory? Or if they sense that Obama is going to win, should they strike before the election to use maximum leverage from Obama? Because he will need the Jewish American vote. He will need the ev- or at least some part of the evangelical Protestant vote to win. And so his thinking is, their thinking in Israel is, uh, now Obama will need our support or the support of Israel's friends. After November, he's in for a full second term. He can throw Israel to the wolves. And so I think the Israelis are now looking at the election. They're now looking at the polls. They may wait until January for a Romney administration if they feel confident enough that Romney will win. But if by mid-September or late September, for whatever reason, there's a skeleton in Romney's closet, uh, the negative attacks are working, against Romney and Ryan, for whatever reason, if they sense there's a real possibility that Obama will win, then they will have no choice but to strike. Because if they strike after November, then Obama will give them no diplomatic cover, they will have no support, they will be completely isolated on the world stage, and the Israelis know that will be, that will be the death of them. They know clearly that without America's support, they cannot sustain a serious long war, not just with Iran, but with the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, with Hamas in Gaza, with Hezbollah in Lebanon, with most likely an empowered Muslim Brotherhood in Syria, Israel is now literally encircled and surrounded by their enemies. And so if America goes to an Obama administration for a second term, then Israel's goose is cooked. And so either Israel will strike early, in about a month, or if they sense a Romney victory, they will wait till January. But either way, Carl, a war is now looming on the horizon. There is going to be a showdown between Israel and Iran. I believe Israel has the right to defend itself. It has the obligation and duty to defend itself. They will not allow themselves to go down into the gas ovens again. They are staring at a second Holocaust. Uh, Ahmadinejad has openly said Israel is a cancerous tumor that must be excised. He wants to wipe out the Zionists, as he calls them, the Zionist regime. Uh, The mullahs are backing him, and Israel shall fight, and Israel will be right. Right, right. Well, well, 
why why would Israel by the way thank you for your analysis and it's just brilliant but let me ask you this why would Israel wait till January if they sense Romney's going to win what's the thinking behind that well because only Romney can only get into power by January right so if Obama's in the White House during November and December they won't do anything right because Obama in fact in many ways will out of spite uh, not support Israel you see the key point to remember about Obama is this he truly is the son of his father. Yeah, I That's know. why his book is entitled, his autobiography, Dreams of My Father. I know. He is truly an anti-Western, anti-colonial, socialist leftist. And in his mind, it is the European powers, the Western powers, who are responsible for the exploitation and impoverishment of the third world. Right. And for him, the third world also encompasses the Muslim world, the Arab world. Oh, yeah. And so in his view, Israel is like Europe and America. Israel is an imperial power. Israel is the source of all the problems in the Middle East. That's why you've noticed he's never gone to Israel on a visit. But he's gone to Saudi Arabia. He sure. went to Cairo. Sure. He extends his hand to the Muslim world, but he won't to the Jews and to the people of Israel. Because in his mind, if you can get rid of the Israeli-Jewish problem, this will bring peace and harmony to the Middle East. Right. So in his mind, Israel is the one that always has to make the concessions. If he loses, and the Jewish-American vote, I think, is going to be pivotal to him, for example, losing in, in, in Florida, he will blame the Jews for his defeat. He will never back them should there be a war in November and December. Right. So uh, they think they can wait till January. They don't think Iran will have the full technology it needs by January, February. They've killed a lot of Iran's or assassinated a lot of Iran's top scientists. They've waged cyber warfare. They have set back Iran's nuclear program about six months to a year. But the, the clock is ticking, and they know basically by February it's now or never. Yeah. You know, Jeff, this really is a hugely historically important election. It, 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 I really think it boils down to this. Either we're going to vote for for our constitutional republic continuing, or we're going to vote for a progressive socialist uh, European-style nation that bow, bows down and kowtows to Islam. Don't, don't you think? I mean, am I, am I even, oversimplifying? You're right. I think it's even deeper than that. I think it's really a decision now between war and peace. Uh, this, to me, is very much like an election of 1936. You, you see the war clouds on the horizon. Right. If you have an Obama second term, I believe Israel will be involved in the fight of its life. You may even see a nuclear war in the Middle East. You will see an all-out war. Uh, Israel will not go down without a nasty fight. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, all the great powers will get involved. Russia will get involved. China will get involved. They'll back Iran. Uh, we will see, I think, a possibility of World War III. This is why if Romney wins, Israel will have the backing, the military strength to be able to crush Iran quickly and decisively, right. and there will not be a world war. But if you have Obama in a second term, uh, my friends, all bets are off. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the way I see it as well, and I'm not just saying that because because I love you, but but I mean, that's... that's I, mean, I hate that, to be so pessimistic. I it's know. a Friday, probably in their cars, looking forward to their weekend. <laughs> and you've just I don't ruined it. say, hey, go jump out a window because the right. war is coming. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but I mean, no, really, the stakes are really that high. He's yeah. that irresponsible. Yeah. He's oh, that yeah. reckless. Yeah. He's that treacherous. And appeasement does not work. I know. It what? didn't work in the 30s. It didn't work under Jimmy Carter. And it will not work today. And that's why the sooner Obama and Biden are gone, the better. You're absolutely right. Jeff Cooner is who you have been listening to. Listen, folks, go to carlgallops.com. Click on Jeff Cooner's picture. You'll see it right there. Take you right to the Washington Times and his articles. Again, he is the host of the Cooner Report on the mighty WRKO out of Boston and, uh, and a weekly correspondent to Freedom Friday. So listen up, America. We'll be back in just a few moments. Mike LeMay, the author of the book Suicide of America, and Christianity, we're going to be talking about Chrislam, Chrislam, the joining together of Christianity and Islam, believe it or not, by some uh, American Christian leaders. You don't want to miss that discussion coming up in just a few moments. We'll be right back after this brief timeout.